But hey, if you ain't bleeding, you ain't working. What's up everybody, welcome back to the Daynator channel. In today's video, we're gonna be tackling Sylvester's front end suspension parts. And we're gonna do a complete front end rebuild on this thing. If you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know that I have done a front end rebuild on the old Failblazer, my wife's original uh, Trailblazer that she drove. That thing has since been parked and we replaced it with this new silver Trailblazer that we lovingly call Sylvester. So all of the replacement parts that we're putting on Sylvester today are from today's sponsor, carparts.com. Let's take a closer look at what we got. So again, we got some true drive parts, new struts, lower control arm bushings, lower control arms, sway bar end links, steering end links, upper control arms, and upper ball joints. Now these all come with their nuts and bolts, washers, zerk fittings, cotter pins, etc. So I'm real excited to freshen up Sylvester's front end suspension. Let's get to it. So I'm actually gonna start in the rear of the vehicle and remove and replace these rear shocks. Now, the only reason why I'm doing this is because this is very simple and I've got a big job ahead of me with the front end of this. So why not knock out something super easy and simple, notch a little accomplishment on my list, and then tackle that big job in the front. So let's get started on the rears. I'm actually not even gonna jack up the vehicle. It's gonna sit right here. I'm gonna remove and replace these shocks just as it's sitting. Got those knocked out pretty quick. Here's the new shock from carparts.com. It's their house brand True Drive. All right, you gotta love shiny new parts. I'm gonna leave that strap on. I'll cut that off when I'm ready to install the bottom bolt. I'll tighten that down all the way in just a second. So this next part's gonna test my timing and skill. I'm gonna snip this strap off of here and the shock is gonna expand. I'm gonna try to line this thing up, snap this bolt in right at the right time and place. See what kind of skill level I've got today. Oh. I airballed it. Oh well, hope he's perfect. Just realized I put my bolt in backwards. That's like I said, nobody's nervous. All right, two brand new True Drive rear shocks installed. Check that off the list. Now let's get this puppy off the ground and install all those brand new. True drive front suspension parts and rebuild the front end on Sylvester. Let's get to it. So this is what we deal with living on a gravel road. Mud. It's stuck to everything. Stuff drives me crazy. Okay, so I've gone through and I have lubricated all of the nuts and bolts that I'm going to be taking off and let that stuff soak. So we're going to get started by removing the caliper as one unit just by unbolting the caliper bracket. It's an 18 millimeter bolt. Okay, I'm just going to set that off to the side for now. I'm going to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts for the brake line. This wire right here is a speed sensor for the ABS. So I need to undo the clips for this. And I went ahead and took the clip out from that 10 millimeter bracket. There's a spot where this thing clips into. So you just pinch on that and pull that out. So we got one more clip up here. I think maybe another one. And then it plugs in right here. We'll have to disconnect it from there. So that's disconnected and that's good because when we remove the spindle, this hub and everything, it's all got to come out in one piece. 
Right next, I'm going to remove this hub nut. It's 35 millimeters. You can break these hub nuts loose with the tire still on. That would hold the hub still. Or you can take a pry bar of some kind and prop it in the hub studs. Use that as leverage to push against the, the ground. I've done that before. Or if you got air tools, you really don't have to worry about any of that. It just zips them off, hopefully. Okay, we're gonna loosen this 24 millimeter nut on the lower ball joint. We're going to loosen this upper ball joint, bolt and nut. It's a 15 millimeter. This outer tie rod nut is a 21 millimeter. And go ahead and disconnect this upper ball joint. So the only thing holding this thing in right now is the lower ball joint post. I took the nut off of it and the CV axle which it's loose, so that's good. We'll have to fight that. See, I was smart when I put these new hubs in. I lubed that all down with anisees, so that wouldn't seize up on me when I was trying to remove this later. You know, just thinking forward, helping a guy out. The guy happening to be me. Okay, now I'm going to remove the end link for the sway bar. These are 21 millimeter nuts. The post has a hexagon shape on the inside, so you got to get one of those special tools to put in there. But I'm using the concrete here as leverage so I can spin this nut off. Now we'll remove the nut off the lower part of the strut assembly. It's a 24 millimeter. So I'm going after these two 21 millimeter bolts that hold in the upper control arms. And these little boogers are in there super tight. I got down on my back, my hips on the concrete and my foot up on the wrench. I was able to press this thing up and loosen it. Unbelievably tight. But it's coming now. This one, I put it on like that. And then I got my foot up here and pushed it and finally broke it loose. I'm not gonna lie, these bolts are a pain in the rear because the fender's in the way. And it's not just a fender cover, there's actually metal behind here. I pushed this AC line in just a little bit, got the head of the bolt to come out. My goodness, they really don't give you much room to pull these bolts out. Okay, I finally got that top bolt loose. What I've done is I took my breaker bar, used some leverage and peeled back this inner fender piece because so I can get my wrench on there a little bit better. The head of the bolt actually runs into the washer reservoir. You just kind of have to finagle it out. Okay, for the strut assembly, I'm going to hit this from the top here. There's that bolt right there, and the other one's right there. So I'm going to use my impact with my extension and swivel head to pop those off. These are 18 millimeter nuts. Pop this out. Okay, now we're gonna go after this lower control arm bushings. And there's a 21 millimeter bolt here, here, and here. So there's three I need to remove and we'll be able to get this lower control arm out of the frame. I just did that same procedure with this end link. Finally got that off, thank goodness. Whew. I hate those things. All right, so there's the carnage of the old parts and our new True Drive suspension parts. Cannot wait to get these on the car. There is one thing I forgot about, and that is I do need to press this ball joint out. So I'm gonna need a ball joint press to do that, and I'll have to run to town and grab one. Go ahead and throw this stuff on. We'll take care of the ball joints later. I cleaned out the tray where the 
lower control arm bushings go. So the three bolts are wire brushed, cleaned up and lubed with some PV plaster. I went ahead and disconnected the lower control arm bushings from the lower control arm, just so this will be a little easier to handle putting them in. I need to rob this arm off of the strut. These are 18 millimeter nuts and bolts. Put my pry bar in the space right there and then took my flathead screwdriver and drove it in there to pry apart this coupling here. And I think I should be able to hit this strut out of here now. Just needs persuasion, fellas, and patience. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, actually, is before I put that strut in, I'm gonna line up this lower control arm at about ride height and go ahead and tighten down these bolts and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Put this in first up here. Okay. Concentrate on this. That works. That works better. Get that in first and then throw that on. Just gonna throw these nuts on here so this doesn't go anywhere. I'll put some anises on everything all these threads whenever I go to tighten everything down. I'll throw that bolt in over here. Sneak that in past the fender. I think my bolt holes are lined up. Cannot confirm. Cannot confirm. All right, that one started finally. All right. Man, got them both started now. Get that about ride height, and then we'll torque them down. Put some anises on the bolts for the strut. These new nuts are 15 millimeter. Put the sway bar end link in. I got the washers, and I got some anti-seize on the bolts. I'm gonna go ahead and sling this puppy in. Same principle is going to apply. Just tighten these things down. Got to have this hex socket to hold the bolt still and then tighten the nut on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the spindle back on. And my problem with this is going to be this upper ball joint. I don't have a press to pop this out. I'll have to go to town and rent one or buy one. So for now, I'm going to leave this in here just to get this all hooked up. So I'm going to put the spindle back on and then I'm going to replace the outer tie rod end link for the steering. I'm going to slip the lower ball joint bolt down through there and the CV axle through the hub simultaneously. Let's see if I can do it. Okay, the CV axle's in. I'm going to take the, hub, the lower ball joint nut and just finger tighten to hold the spindle in place. Is this heavy? Believe it or not. Go ahead. Put the hub nut on here, one, so the CV axle doesn't slide out, and two, I don't lose the hub nut. You can see just how destroyed this ball joint is. Me, 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 me. Burp. All right, before I put this ball joint into the upper control arm, I'm gonna move this caliper over to this side where it belongs. Because if I don't do that now, and I put the spindle on, you're in for a headache. Ask me how I know. Quick jump edit here. What's up everybody, future Damnator here. I have rented a ball joint press tool from the store in town and I'm tackling the ball joints. I've got this kit and the upper ball joint for the Trailblazer is narrower than all of the 
press rings that are in this kit. So I'm kind of having to jerry-rig this, but you're gonna get the idea of how you press a ball joint out. How we're gonna get the new one in, not sure yet. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here I'm getting ready to remove the upper ball joint from the spindle. Check it out. Before pressing out this ball joint, I need to remove the snap ring. Okay, I've got a ring and two press discs. This bottom press disc is what I'm actually using to press the ball joint out with. You're supposed to use the rings and it's supposed to sit right on the outside of the ball joint and you press it out that way, but this seems to be working. I've already got it to pop, so it's coming out. And then this is an adapter I got from a second tool that the store told me I needed to rent because it's four wheel drive. I didn't think I was gonna need it, but apparently it's coming in handy because right now it's giving me a gap to be able to push the ball joint out. It's already starting to come out. I went ahead and well lubricated the, the pressing bolt. It's a little tricky at first, but as you can see, it's pressing. Go ahead and take this off. I'm gonna need a bigger cup down here. I'll show you what I did. I had this cup down here because it fit in the groove nicely. And on the top end, I was using this press disc. It had a flat enough surface to push on the ball joint. And I used this because it fit nicely on that. And then I used the other press disc right there. And it's got that groove for the bolt post so it holds nice and still. So that is what my pressing force was. And you can see it's already dropped, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch. But it went as far as this cup would allow it. it won't go any further. Okay, I'm sure this is extremely not the way to do it, but it's working. I've got the pressing bolt on the top of the ball joint. Now, of course, that can swivel, and if I'm careful enough, I might be able to just do this without that thing moving. It's actually working and pressing the ball joint down into the receiving cup. Yes. Okay, I'm going to clean that out, and we're ready to put in the other one. Okay, I've got the new True Drive upper ball joint. I went ahead and removed the boot off the post so that'll slide up in here. This thing just kind of gets in the way with this ridge. I'm gonna be using this cup from the 4x4 adapter kit and you'll see that this is raised right here for the grease fitting, but with that opening right there, this fits in and does not press against that raised portion. So we'll be using this to press it in. So I'm using the deepest cup from the 4x4 ball joint adapter press kit. It's got a section in the top of this cup that the press bolt can fit down into so it's not going to slide off. So we're going to go ahead and start tightening her down and see what happens. It's a 22 millimeter socket on the top of this press bolt. Please go in straight. That's all I ask. It's going in. It is so close. About a millimeter to go. Okay, finally. I ended up finding an old hub nut that had a wide enough diameter. And I set it down inside that cup and I used it to push the final oh, millimeter into the spindle. Before we snap this boot all the way on and grease it, we got to put on the snap ring. This is a C-clip that was on the old one. I suppose I could use that one again, but they gave us a snap ring in this kit, so we're going to go ahead and use it. These are small snap ring pliers. I don't know if it's going to open up this. Not good enough. Put this boot back on it. Okay, we'll get that boot on there nice and secure, and then it's ready to go back into the upper control arm. So I got the boot on, and I gotta tell you, it wasn't that easy. I ended up just taking a pair of pliers and very carefully pressing on this, trying not to rip the boot, because that would be bad. What we're gonna do is take the grease fitting, put it in the bottom of the ball joint down here. We're gonna grease this. We're all greased up. We're ready to install this back in the upper control arm, but uh, I want to let past Daninator do that. I'll see you. The nut they give you for this bolt is a 16. How weird is that? I'm going to tighten this 
axe on that. Again, these caliper bracket bolts are 18 millimeter. Putting this brake line bracket back on with these 10 millimeter bolts. So I rerouted the wheel speed sensor line and got that all hooked back in. So now we're gonna focus our attention on the steering end link. Okay, I'm back at this. I'm trying to get the nut loose on this tie rod. So I used a little bit of heat on this nut, trying to get that thing to come loose. You can see it's still smoking. So hopefully I'll get a wrench on this and be able to zip that thing off, hopefully. Well, it took me a lot of heat and me practically standing on the end of this crescent wrench, but it's finally broke loose. So since we got the jam nut loose, we can spin this end link. What I ended up doing was putting this crescent wrench on here, putting it underneath the CV axle shaft and using that as leverage. A little bit of a flat spot right there, you can put a wrench on and use that to spin it. But I've always found that putting a box end wrench on there gives you the most grip. All right, I want to pause here for just a second to tell you that before I started taking this thing off, I actually took my tape measure and measured from where the jam nut meets the nut on the steering rack to the notch in the tie rod end link, or you can measure to the center of the bolt of the uh, ball joint on the end of the end link. You need to write that measurement down so that when you go to put this thing back on, you can put it into the exact distance that you measured, and that way you can keep your car in somewhat close to the original alignment as it was before you took the tie rod end link off. Now, after this is all said and done, I'm gonna take this thing into a shop somewhere and have them professionally front end align this thing. Put a little AMC's on the end of this so I won't have the problem removing it the next time. I got my notes and I measured the distance and uh, matched it with what I wrote down. Now we gotta hold this still and tighten that jam nut. And we're good. So we got a 19 millimeter socket for this castle nut. I'll go ahead and tighten this down and throw in the cotter pin. Okay, the hole lines up, so we're good. Okay, that's gonna do it for this side. At this point, I just wanna make sure that my axle nut's tightened down to spec, throw the wheel back on, and this thing can go back down to earth. Let's go tackle the driver's side. Finally got that silly thing off the end of the strut. I don't know if you can tell in the time lapse or not, but I banged the snot out of my pinky. Still throbbing, still bleeding, but hey, if you ain't bleeding, you ain't working.
Well, that is a front suspension rebuild and rear shock replacement using True Drive parts from carparts.com for Sylvester the Failblazer. Purchasing parts from carparts.com is a cinch. They package these parts in two separate kits, so I didn't have to find each individual part. All I did was add these two kits to cart, put in my payment information. These parts were shipped really quickly. I had all these quality parts with their hardware and accessories ready to go when it was time to go to work. As far as the job goes, it's pretty straightforward, but I'm not gonna lie, it's very laborious, if that's even a word. It's a lot of work is what I'm trying to say. There's a whole lot of wrenching, bust knuckles, and busted pinkies. Oh well, that's the price you pay for adventure, I guess. Check out the channel. I've got all kinds of repair videos, some vlogs, some fun, a whole lot more. If it warrants your subscription, I would greatly appreciate it. As always, thanks for watching. God bless. Be sure and hit that like switch on your way out. We'll see you next time. Special thanks to carparts.com for sponsoring today's video. Guys, if you're searching for replacement parts for your vehicle, give carparts.com a look. Their mobile friendly site makes it super easy to search for and buy parts online anytime, anywhere, giving DIYers a parts store on demand.